Hi, welcome back to our Watercolor Wednesday class. And today I'm painting basket of apples. I'm gonna show you, I set the apples up in my basket, but I'm not gonna do all of the basket. It's partly how we paint and draw first um, the round form of a basket and the weed texture and the apples. We practiced apples before. So let me show you what I'm looking at over here on the other side of my room. Uh, there's my apple basket. I put a white uh, foam core board behind it. And you have to understand that, of course, uh, and I'll send you the photo so you have that. Or you can get your own basket and do apples inside. I've started the sketch, but I'm going to show you how to do the basket weave and uh, work with the apples. We'll, we'll be doing some lights and shadows too. So here's what I've begun here. You can see some of the basket weave and I've lightly indicated the apple forms using my pencil and hopefully you can see, oh uh, yes, hopefully you can see most of the um, sketch. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Well, there we go. This um, is the form that, as a matter of fact, what I thought I'd do is show you if I'm making a basket, it depends on the perspective. You really have to think about the form of the rim as being round like the top of a glass. And uh, in this case, uh, the sides come down and this line is repeated. So it's like a jar lid. And then the overlap of the edges uh, will give you this little bit of effect. We're gonna talk about the basket weave. If you have, for example, a handle on this basket, and let's say, um, let, let, me, let me make that line a little higher just for composition and realism. If you had a handle, it would kind of level out. It would have a flat side and as it moved to the top, you might even see a little bit of the underside, depending again on your perspective. Uh, and of course, we're looking at the basket as though, I'm always making extra lines. We're looking at the basket as though we can see inside. But of course, with when you put forms in, then they're going to, they're going to fill that up. Okay, so uh, that was a quick little indication about making a basket. So with this basket, there is no handle. And I started with my rim and now I have to think about the pattern and I have to draw it the way I see it. So here's what happens. You have, if you know about weaving, it's the warp and the weft. So the warp is the, are the strings that hang down and the weft is what fills in. It weaves in and out and that's where you get your terminology. So I have to think about the, warp coming down every other it's like brick lane but it's the spacers you really have to observe what i'm um drawing here by making those and if you wanted to you could do it like this you could just say all right uh here are the warps and as this goes around by the way you can't tell so much what is going on and these lines should be straighter here. So here's, here's what I'm indicating. You see how this little chain is getting, going in uh, where that's gonna be coming down. So the next one does like this. Well, it really takes a little concentration, but there you get the idea. Okay, so let me quickly finish weaving this basket and I will tell you that as you go around the sides, this is kind of a, a, real, a serious little right brain thing. Um, so I'm always going in and showing these little dark places because that's what happens when the weave goes, uh, I hope you can see that. When the weave goes in, you've got a dark little shadow place. Okay, so what I wanted to say is over on the side, you can see how this side is finished you cram that in because as it turns around, those little weavings get closer together, just like the wrapping on the edge here. Okay, so warp, 
and whiffed. Warp and whiffed. Warp and whiffed. All right, so these pieces, the basket is being woven now. <laughs> and I'm almost through weaving the basket. Yes, it's complicated, but it's what makes this part of your uh, drawing and your design. And I probably can stop right there. I need to finish over here. Again, this has to go really close together because it's on the side and it kind of disappears. You can almost just characterize what's going on like an illustration. Again, I have all these little shadow places which I'll put in with my paint. Okay, so the basket, I'm gonna call that done. My apples I started and I'm looking, as I, as I look up, I am drawing the forms of the apples, the indention, which is gonna help me with some shading and some stems. I see, I always indicate where the highlight is. I've got some natural light coming in through the window. This apple, I just moved a few minutes ago because I wanted to have, if you notice, I've got the space left over over here. So I decided, oh, what I wanna do is add some leaves as though um, this apple, I'm just gonna make this up. I, I wanted to indicate that maybe these apples were just picked. And so it helps this little negative space over here. All right, this apple, I saw, I saw this form coming around and this one's in front of it. So I pause and I see another apple in here. So this actually, I need to bring that so that this one is here. This apple is in front. Sometimes it's easier just to draw all the apples that are closer to you, like um, the rim of this basket. This was just sticking out. This one is just over the rim. Then these are going behind so that, that you have that sense of overlap. And then we'll create and indicate where the shadows are. This is very dark in here. I'm doing a little sh pencil shading just to remind me. And this stem sticks up here. I don't think I see any more, oh, I do see one more stem, this stem right here. Um, I need to move that a little higher up, yes. All right. I love a pencil eraser. I don't mind using it. And where I have lines that I don't want, I'll just clean that up a bit. There is the barely visible, another apple right here, which is nice because it makes the basket seem fuller. This is quite a large apple. It's almost overflowing the form. I need to stick this out a little bit more so I can get a bit of an edge in here. Okay, so there's my sketch. So let's paint. Um, I can begin with the background or I can begin with the apples. I think what I'm going to do is begin with a basket. <laughs> so where am I supposed to begin? Wherever I want to begin. Um, I see this basket as kind of a yellow brown. So I'm mixing a little burnt sienna and my uh, bumblebee yellow, it's kind of a lemon yellow, to make this nice wash. I want to give the whole painting, the whole basket, a quick wash. And I mix a little graphite. I probably draw a little darker for the demo than I would in real life. I'm trying to decide if there's a little light edge up here, and maybe there is. And is there shadows? Absolutely. On the basket, I want to add just a touch. I put a touch of blue, a touch of that little bit of magenta right here. Now I'll come in with some more shadows, but while that's still wet, I want the basket to kind of have a, a sense of 
form already, you know, just with that little bit of shadow. It's really lighter over here, to be honest. So maybe I can just lighten it like that. Okay, I don't want to, didn't want to get too dark. So already, even with my pencil lines, I have a sense of the basket, but I'll come back with a little brush later. I'm going to use reds and I'm going to start, oh, you know, I'm not going to use reds to start with because there's yellow underneath some of those. For instance, this apple right here, remember our contour painting. I'm using washes today. So I'm going to paint one apple at a time by indicating all the colors that I see and we'll do some layering. Well, really, there's a lot of yellow underneath. It's a pale yellow. And this white right here, and I forgot to draw the light, the highlight. Any object that's receiving, like a shiny surface, is going to be receiving some light. This is very light here. There is a light here. There is a light here. Sometimes I want to exaggerate those just a little bit uh, for form. Okay, this apple does have a lot of yellow. And I'll put that in. And <laughs> I think all the apples are going to have some underlying yellow. You know, apples can be yellow, green, or red. Ah, okay, contouring. I have to remind myself to go. The flow of the brush is the contour. Nothing is flat, it's rounded. Oh, this is gonna be so dark red, it's not gonna matter. But if I, if I leave uh, where the highlights are, this is gonna be very shattered. That, that apple goes down inside the basket, so it's gonna be really kind of dark. This is, this is gonna be really dark right here. So I'm building my darks. Now, I will have some green here. I guess I could, I, I could actually start with some yellow. But uh, I want to just skip, give, um, I'm using my, my skip screen, which is a yellow green, and a little bit of that purple to dull the green. And I just have some variation of the color. And this leaf might, I might just take some water and soften. Just to, just to have a change in the green. I don't know if I want to make those darker. I, I might want to make them darker because something tells me those apple leaves would be darker, much darker. So, but maybe there's light hitting it and so they might be, they might be just like that. Okay, I'm happy with that and I'll just leave it. So the next step is to, to paint where it's dry and it seems to still be pretty wet. So I'm gonna do a wash in the background. And I wanted to, you know, I'm gonna reach over and get my uh, Grumbacher one inch brush, which will work almost as nice as a sky flow. And I'm gonna wet, I'm gonna pale, I don't know. I thought I would keep it white, but there's um, an interesting shadow going on. Uh, behind the apples and a little bit of gray might be nice with this to contrast with my reds. You see that's dark so I'm just wetting this and I'm going to come in with some gray. So I'm using this ultramarine. So the ultramarine right here, there's my ultramarine. And a really nice gray is to use that little bit of burnt sienna. And because it's dark over here, this is where I'm gonna start my shadow. So that it actually has a bit of, it sort of bleeds now into the lighter value up here. I'm, I'm a little too dark, actually. So what I might do is just bring this across. Let this be, instead of a white background, a pale blue. And what I might do is just darken here again. Just go back over that with a burnt sienna and 
the blue, the ultramarine blue. Now that is pretty bold. I like that. I think I'll leave it like that. Uh, something tells me I could get away with a little shadow here without going over my basket though. That just helped. Okay. And now I wanna put it up here. Hmm. I don't know why, cause it's not there, but it looks good. So that's for artistic reasons. Now I should stop. Let's go back to the basket. And here's where I use the little round brush to do my detail in the basket. And I'm going to use that burnt sienna in blue, but I'll use it much stronger. So here is the same color for the background, only voila, it's almost a, almost a black, um, a deep, deep uh, burnt sienna in blue. And honestly, I want to make these little shadow places. Now, this takes a while just popping those in. And the other thing I'm going to do is take another little round brush and while that's wet, the same basket color that's still sitting here, I can begin to soften those up and put in those little softer shadows. Now there's a little variation in the basket weave color. I could choose to do that or I can uh, leave it all as one basket color. There's actually some great, when you see the photograph again and you take a look, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, this basket was made by um, a North Carolina lady and she, oops, I forgot that's not my water. We don't want that dark. So one is, one is supposed to be my paint and one is supposed to be my water for blending. Um, what I was gonna say is she wove two, probably vegetable dyed the um, basket. It, sometimes these uh, oak stripped um, baskets are made with walnut holes to get a nice brown. And the gray comes from other uh, organic matter. Okay, you can see already by popping those little darks how the basket weave begins to come to life. And it's just very simply done. So I'm, I just every now and then I have to keep observing and where, for example, there's a little shadow that falls on each of these little strips that go up and down. So that little bit of a shadow, because the light is coming in from, if the light is coming in from this side, then all your shadows are gonna to fall to the opposite side. Same thing is gonna happen with the apples, okay? Now, this isn't quite, I'm not quite done with my basket, but I don't want to be tedious and paint every single one for you. I think that um, you will get the idea if I just finish with this one side and then you'll see the finished piece and you can, um, recognize that that's how it's done. So I also see a little shadow on the, this as this rim goes around, most of my really dark places are up here. So I'm darkening that. And again, I'm extending a little water just so that that rim has a sense of going around. Um, I'm, I'm observing this a little bit more carefully and I see that this rim has a little texture to it. Do I really want to sit and do all this texture? Well, I could quickly do a little bit. It goes, if it goes uh, up and down, that is my warp and my, I hope I'm saying those things correctly. My warp is up and down, I have to remind myself, warp is up and down and weft is in and out. Okay, not that it really matters to have that term, but okay. I'm not quite finished, but I'm gonna say this is enough for you to tell what's going on. Now let's do some apples. My, I like the way the background dry too. Um, that's sort of subtle and kind of sweet. I'm wondering if I'm gonna wish I had another green leaf over here, but I think I'll be happy with this. Okay, so these were my brushes for the basket. I'm going to now switch back to my little flat half inch. 
and I'm going to work with the reds and I want some bright red and I want some purple red. So I play with my blues and my reds and oof, that purple didn't work. Uh, oh, that's nice right here. So I mixed up, I've got a lot of paint here because of what we're working with. Um, this red, I'm looking and I think I need a little brown in it. Um, more, more red. Okay, so I've gotten a dark, dark color. Let's do, let's do the lighter color first. So let me work with this one apple right here. So I'm observing that this, these lines are going into, again, I'm looking at my subject. If you have a photograph, that's fine. If you wanted to, you could set up your own little basket with your apples and observe, because I think working from life really teaches you a great deal about your subject and also about lights and shadows. Okay. Sometimes I paint more, I, draw, I do a lot of drawing with a brush and then, now this is where the dark side is. So I already have a lot of that dark on this brush. I want to do something right here that indicates that this edge is slightly lower than these little woven pieces here. Okay, so it's, it's a subtle little thing, but it will look like, matter of fact, I'm gonna pick up some of that dark um, that I had for the shadows on the basket, just to make that really stand out. Now, this apple is going to get much bolder. Uh, I, I need another brush. I keep thinking that uh, I don't like cleaning my brushes or something today, but I do know that, let's see here, I've got a big brush. I'm just softening that up. Yes, that's what I needed right there. Now, because that light is really not white, I don't wanna lose all of it. I'm just gonna pick it up a bit and keep going with this right next to the basket. And shape around that. I want to go back to my uh, red rose matter and my cad red. Cad red is really a bright red, and there is a lot of red. Now, by painting this um, with stripes, which is what I'm doing here, the the apple has um, growth rings, I'm not really sure what the technology, uh, what the term, the correct term is, but because it has these little text, the texture going around, now that stays light, I have to remind myself, ah, now I'm going to take the side of this brush and just drag it down. Now this is an area, this is an area that's kind of light, so now I'm going to go back and just add a little bit of I hardly see where my yellow, a little bit of the yellow does show through. All right, so that apple is beginning to take form. Um, I don't like that spot right here. It's a, I think it bled a little too much. So I'm gonna come and bring that dark in one more time. Again, going with the shape of the apple. Now, I didn't want to lose that light and I was about to do that. So pick it back up. Cleaning this brush once again. This is a big brush, but it holds a lot of water. So I have to dab it. Because it holds so much water, it's doing the same thing again. All right. I'm going to go. It's hard to remember which brush has what on it. All right. So this one, I'm going to go back with some strokes with a red. Just because it's still wet, you can see those lines. Ah, now, do I want that so light? No. 
I'm going to soften it and leave it. Okay, that apple, that apple is okay for now. Okay, so I'm going to do two more. So you get the idea of how to paint all your apples, but it's a matter of looking for lights and darks. Already, I have, and I have to be careful here because this is that red purple. This apple is going down behind this one. I don't want them to bleed. So I'm leaving a little bit of a light edge. And I'm going to that really dark shadowed place that I indicated with my uh, pencil. And this whole apple on this side will be dark. And then as it goes behind here, it's also dark. Looks like this apple is cut, uh, kind of shadowing um, that one. So I've, I've shown where I will be. Well, I'm also going to have to do, I don't know if you can, if you don't mind my turning my page a little bit. Um, trying to show the lines that are coming from the back side here also are dark. Okay, so I put in some darks. I want to leave some of that yellow and blending and softening the color as it comes here. There's some yellow coming in here. And sometimes this will dry on me before I get a chance to soften the edge. So I just re-wetted and rubbed on that a little bit. I'm gonna switch back to my red again. I need bright red in here. Again, I have some highlights. Some um, highlight is a shiny place where the light is reflecting. And sometimes, I really gotta get darker there. Sometimes it's just a, a ridge of light or a spot of light. In this case, this apple seems to have a light going all the way across here. So I'm dry, dry brushing and dragging this and I need to blend it a little bit better, but at least I haven't lost my lights. I'm gonna get much darker here with, uh, I'm gonna use that cad red and a little burnt sienna to darken it and a little bit of cobalt blue. Sorry, I'm sticking my brush in ultramarine. I checked my label so I was sure I was doing the right one. So this is the ultramarine, any dark blue though. Okay, see how dark that is? Yes. And I try to get the form and just drag some of that in. And the stem, I'm gonna come back and paint later. It's sort of a brown stem. And I do a little dry brush, but I want there to be unity about the apple. It needs to look like it's a form. Well, it's not perfect. Uh-oh, I got a hair from that brush, big brush. Uh, it's not perfect, but I like it. See, I, I think I might lighten just by putting a little bit of water and lifting, sometimes stroking it in the direction. Okay, I think I like that apple. I'm gonna do this really dark one here because it does get light at the top and it will show you how shading can work to your advantage. This is even, hmm, this is darker though here than it is there. So. Make those kind of observations. It seems like it would be darker here. And again, I want this rim to really pop. So I stick a little bit of the uh, shadow, that blue, brown, dark, and I work around this. So I hope that captures that rim. Again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of light um, on the edge here because that's like a reflected light and that means that any object that has 
light bouncing off the back side. That's a that's called a reflected light. Reflected light, and it happens when there is light around it. Now I just added water to the top of that to keep it um, highlighted. This this is again that rose and cerulean, and I just needed to get some more red in here. Okay. So the rest of your apples are basically going to be painted the same way. You're just going to be um, moving the dark against the light like this. And um, I, sometimes I'm never sure how I'm going to paint something until I start painting. But I can tell you that this is how these forms are going to develop. You can, you can try uh, putting in the dark and then adding water. You can try the strokes of um, just indicate where your really light spot's going to be. So like right here is supposed to be my really light spot. I'm not getting the same stroke, uh, the same little detail um, that I actually see. see. See right here, I was able to keep those lines in the apple. I guess what I could do is drag a little dry brush over these and I'll have that effect. Now, I didn't want that to be white. But I wanted it to, to be light and now it's too light all over. So I go back to my red and again take your brush and move it in the direction of the contour. When you have these little indentions, okay, like this, the way you can make those show up is to darken. Let's go back to that blue brown and observe that there is a dark space as the apple is indented and that's that happens on either side of the stem and then it comes out sometimes as a as little strokes kind of like the center of a flower it's just the design of the apple okay and same thing here there's more of a shadow here than there is here. And that's because the light is coming this way and that this bump blocks where that dark is. So you can always put just a little more dark over there, soften that little bit. Now the stems again are dark. And I'm looking at the stem. Actually, it's yellow, orange, yellow, orange. Ooh, that's nice. And then it gets dark on the edge. Maybe that's a little dark. And then go with your dark blue brown for that little bump. And I just added another little line here as a shadow to that. This might still be wet, but I'll give it a try. I put in the dark first. Oh, this one has to have, well, I've got about half of the apples done. This is going to definitely have some darks in there because those leaves. So although it's not completely finished, I think you're going to get an idea of how to do your basket with your apples. And um, if you are ready, uh, try a setting up your own still life. Okay, there's the part that's finished and it is not too bad. It looks like, you know, this is how you get started, a pencil sketch and then just move into your colors with your lights and the darks. Have fun with your basket of apples.